Hey there, how are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing? Come on in, let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, today I'm bringing to you a DIY using mm -hmm, these here plaques that you can get from Dollar Tree right now. You see these plaques and you might be thinking to yourself, what can I really do with them other than paint them? Well, today I'm going to show you a quick and easy DIY that is so budget friendly that really has that rustic Christmas feel to it that I think you're going to love. So I'm going to quit my Gavin. Let's jump into it and let's do some Christmas DIYing on a budget because that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. These plaques, they're press board now. Perfect, because it's gonna make it easier to remove the elevated pieces. Mm, yep, you do want to do it without breaking it. I will tell you, out of the three plaques that I removed the elevated pieces, this was the only piece that I broke because I wasn't being as gentle as I needed to be. But luckily, because of where it broke, I hit it with some hot glue, replaced that piece. Once I'm done DIYing this, you're gonna be none the wiser. When you remove these elevated pieces, you do want to keep them because we are going to use them in the DIY. So just kind of take your time removing them. Then I'm going to go in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to give the front of this plaque a good healthy coating of that. You will see that the front isn't completely smooth where I removed those pieces, but that is okay. No need to smooth them out because it's not going to show. I'm gonna cover these plaques with some burlap. This is a burlap roll that you can find at Walmart in the wedding section. I like it because it is a tightly woven burlap. Once I've got the burlap on the plaque, I'm gonna go in with some Mod Podge and apply a second coat. This is not only gonna help adhere it better onto the plaque, but it's gonna stiffen that burlap so when we cut the excess burlap off the edges, it's not gonna fray. You're gonna get nice, clean cuts. All those elevated pieces that I removed, well, those are gonna get covered in burlap too. With this Santa plaque, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I wanted to show you that I found that the metal spatula worked better than the plastic one because it was a bit thinner and you could get farther under the plaque without breaking it, and so yeah, this is definitely the way to go. There was a learning curve in this and I figured it out, mastered it. And so yeah, I'm super excited about these press board pieces because the wood ones, you could never remove the elevated pieces because they were glued down so well. And so yeah, thank you Crafter Square. My word, I really am all over the place when filming this DIY, but because I am doing three plaques in this style, why not? This is how you remove the excess burlap from your plaques. I find the easiest way to do it is to use a safety blade like this. You want to have a good fresh blade in there so you get nice clean cuts. No fraying is going to happen because that burlap was stiffened. Using scissors is not the best way to cut this because there are those angled edges and you're not going to get as close to the plaque as you would get when using, yes, a blade. Switching gears again, we're back to the snowman. I've cut all the burlap off of my pieces. Now it is time just to hot glue these pieces back to their rightful place, putting our snowman and our Santa Claus back together. Walmart has this jute cord that is thicker than Dollar Tree twine, but not as thick as the nautical rope. It's the happy medium. I'm gonna use this cord to give the edges of my plaque that finishing touch and kind of outline all those elevated pieces. Using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut stain and this stiffer paintbrush. 
I'm gonna use this to add some dimension to this plaque. Adding dimension is gonna give it depth and we're gonna add some personality to this. And so I wanted to add on to that rustic look and you can easily do that using an ink stain such as this one. I wanna give my snowman some features, but I don't wanna use a paint because I feel like that's gonna take away from the rustic feel that I'm going for. So I'm just gonna use more of the ink. I'm gonna add some rosy rustic cheeks and I'm gonna go in and just add some simple features like the eyes and the mouth using the ink as well. And I'm just gonna keep it simple, but it's gonna be effective and it's gonna bring this snowman to life. These pieces are going on the mantle of my fireplace. I wanted them to stand so I can easily do that by adding a couple Jenga blocks. I stained the Jenga blocks so they don't stand out and this is what we are left with. Rustic, fun, and adorable. I love this piece. For Santa, I'm just gonna show you how I add some of the features. Now, when I did the rope, I did go darker on the rope because I wanted the rope to stand out outside of the shadowing that I am going to add to this Santa. It's so easy to add features to this just by using, I would say these parentheses is how I kind of break it down. I keep it simple, I don't overthink it. And using the stain, I love the look of it. And just by shadowing in a mouth and the nose, and the pom-pom, it's gonna add more, I guess, personality to these. I love non-traditional rustic Christmas pieces just like these. Since there was a Christmas tree plaque out, I figured why not do this one too? Here's another fun technique for these plaques using stain. I'm using a couple different colors here. I've got a walnut stain that was in my stash. This is great for making darker colored stains. And this natural, which is best for making lighter colored stains. To mix my own stains, I like to mix them in these ramekins that you can get from Dollar Tree because they've got lids on them. Stain, a little goes a long way, so you don't need to make a lot. And with one can of stain, you can make several different colors. I like to use this dropper to transfer my stain because it's just quicker, it's easier, and it's not so messy. So I'm gonna take and just fill, I would say my ramekin up a little less than halfway to color my stain. Yes, I'm using oil paint. That is how you make colored stain. Oil paints are best. Artist Loft, you can find it at Michael's. You're gonna get this 12 pack for about $5 and you're getting 12 different colors. So I'm gonna take my oil paint. I'm gonna add just a bit of it to the stain. You see what I'm adding here. I'm gonna mix it so that paint is well incorporated with the stain. And this is now in turn making a colored stain. What is the benefit of using a colored stain? The benefit is you don't lose the feeling of seeing that wood texture. When you stain something, you get that wood finish, the wood grain in there, and that is why so many of us love using stain. You don't wanna go out and buy a can of every colored stain because then it's gonna cost a ton of money, but you can make your own just by using some oil paint and a lighter colored wood stain. You're gonna apply it just like you would with paint, and you can see that just a little goes a long way. When you do apply the stain to the wood, the wood is dry, so it is going to absorb this stain quickly. And so you, wait, you may need two to three coats to get the color that you want. But what's great about this is when you add those two to three coats, again, you are not losing that wood grain look. For that smaller can of Minwax, that natural color that I'm using, you're gonna pay under $4 for it. And when you pair that with the $5 that you're gonna pay for the Artist Loft oil paints, oh my word, for under $10, you're getting 12 different colors of stain. I'm gonna take a bit of the orange and a bit of the brown oil paint, mix it with that natural wood stain and that's the color that I'm gonna come up with for the rustic orange for my pumpkins. And I'm gonna make all the colors that I need for this truck. I'm gonna make a brown, a black. I've got a few of these plaques to DIY for this fall and harvest wall hanging that I'm making here today. 
Once my pieces are good and colored, I'm gonna go in with a black ink pad and some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain, and I'm gonna add some detailing and dimension to my pieces, and look at how amazing that looks. Dollar Tree's got these fun pumpkins. These raffia bows are horrible. I don't even know why they put these on there, so we're just gonna remove that, and is it coming off? It did. And we're gonna throw those out, to this pumpkin, I'm gonna add some brown to the back. Again, this is gonna add dimension. I don't wanna make my pumpkin completely orange. Adding this brown is going to really take it to the next level. It's gonna need a couple coats. Then I'm gonna go into those elevated areas and I'm gonna take that rustic orange I made and give these pieces a good couple coats of that. And again, go in with that Distress Ink and add more detailing and dimension to the pumpkins as well. It really does make all the difference. Dollar Tree has these craft sticks. This is one that I had on hand from Lowe's, but you're gonna need one or two of them. By taking a hammer, you can distress it. I don't want my wood stick to look perfect. I want it to look aged and distressed because I feel like that's gonna add to the personality and character of this. Once I've hammered the heck out of this wood, I did go over it with a bit of sandpaper to get rid of those splinters. Then I'm gonna hit it with some of that stain that I had left over in my ramekin. I'm telling you, a little goes a long way. Look at how gorgeous that is looking. And with that stick, I'm going to hang these three wood pieces that I just DIY'd with some homemade colored stain and I'm gonna use raffia. I'm gonna hit it with a bunch of glue on the back side there, and I'm gonna finish this off with a raffia hanger and a raffia bow. Take a look at this piece. How fun is that? Just more fun DIYs that you can do using these wood plaques from Dollar Tree. They are one of my favorite things to DIY because they're easy and they are such versatile pieces. Get creative, make it your own. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Jennifer, who's bringing to us her recreation of my latest autumn and fall scarecrow. Jennifer, I am loving your DIY. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. Here's a fun clip of Biza and Ray just the other day. He's right there just staring at you. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> Good boy, Visa. I'm gonna say that these pieces here scream my Christmas decor style. Not only do they have that homemade, handmade feel to them, but they've got that rustic touch using the burlap and the stain that I love. I hope you all enjoyed today's rustic Christmas DIY using the Dollar Tree plaques. If you're looking for more inspiration when it comes to these plaques, go ahead and click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites, my past Christmas favorites using these plaques. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, I'm gonna say it. Stay positive because I sure as heck am trying. Bye for now, everybody. Go pick some of these plaques up and DIY them with me. Bye.